Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Kalinati. It has been a little while for me, this is my first time filming anything in over a month actually. Um, that's just how things go with new job, getting sick, recovering from a sinus infection, and laryngitis, and bronchitis, and then of course, the holidays. <laughs> So, um, yeah, it's been a little while. I'm feeling a bit rusty and my voice may give out on me at some point, but whatever. I am very excited to actually film this. I am really looking forward to things coming out in the new year, and I'm so ready for 2021 to be done. <laughs> So, as you may know, because you've read the title of the video, this is going to be my most anticipated books coming out in January, February, and March of 2022. Also, I think I've been doing these lists for like seven years now, and I'm frankly losing track of what year I'm talking about. <laughs> um, usual disclaimers are going to apply the first is that I am not entirely sure that all of these publication dates are set in stone. We're still living in very disrupted times and with supply chain issues and everything. You just you just never know. Some of these books may come out on time, others may be delayed. Um, and my information is accurate as of about a week ago when I last checked what I had on my list. If you are looking for any more information about any of these books, you can always find it by using the Goodreads links that I put in all of my descriptions. The second disclaimer is that this is not a complete list by any means. This is just a heavily, heavily pared down list of the books that I know for sure I am looking forward to and will be reading sooner rather than later. Many of these are also books that I have pre-ordered. I am, of course, looking forward to a bunch of other things coming out over the next couple of months, but it is pretty much impossible to put them all on one list, especially when I'm committing to coming back and like reading all of them and, and reporting back to you guys about how that went. So with all that being said, let's dive into the books I am most looking forward to over the next three months. First up in January is Tiger Honor by Yoon Ha Lee. This is a sequel or maybe companion to Dragon Pearl. This is a middle grade fantasy series in the Rick Riordan Presents line. Now, I had some issues with Dragon Pearl. Mostly I did not love the main character of that book, but I really liked the world, the world building, um, the action. I thought the way that the book ended was really satisfactory. So I'm ready to have more in this world, especially because until recently I didn't even know there was going to be a sequel. This book um, is following a young tiger spirit named Seven who also joins the space forces and then seems to cross paths with the events and characters from the previous book. Which I'm not going to go into detail because I don't want to spoil things for people but I am really looking forward to this, and especially knowing that um, while previous characters like Min may reappear, the protagonist is going to be somebody else. Yeah, I'm excited about this one, and anything by Yoon Ha Lee is of course going to get my attention. Something completely different that is definitely not middle grade space fantasy is The Missing Page by Kat Sebastian. I am so freaking excited about this book, guys. It is finally coming out. This is the sequel to Hither Page, and this series is, uh, you know, male-male historical romance set slightly after the end of World War II. In the first story, we're introduced to the main characters who are um, a doctor now working in a small English village, but had formerly been working during the war, um, and then a kind of like spy slash undercover agent who may be slightly at loose ends now that his skills are not as necessary since they're no longer fighting a war. Um, they meet up in this village while looking into some murders or mysterious deaths, and they form a relationship. And of course, in this second book, they are continuing to be together and investigate mysteries. I don't need to know any more than that. I loved Hither Page. I recently reread it and had to upgrade it to a five star read. It was so good. So, yeah, I loved it, and I cannot wait for the missing page. Another sequel, in fact I think there are going to be a lot of sequels on this list, but one that I wasn't expecting to come out anytime soon and is going to be here in a couple of weeks is Akata Woman by Nnedi Okorafor. I think this is the third and last in the Akata Witch series. Um, there was a pretty significant gap between books one and two, which is why I was not expecting Akata Woman to come out anytime soon, so thank you Nnedi Okorafor. Th this series is probably 
my favorite thing I've ever read by Nnedi Okorafor, to be honest. I really loved Akata Witch, but um, the second one, Akata Warrior, just took it to the next level. It's, it's about a Nigerian-American girl, now teenager, um, who's living in Nigeria again. Uh, she's albino and she finds out that she is a witch. She has talents. She's one of the the leopard people, I think is what they're called. Um, and the first book, of course, was just the, the introduction of finding out about this magical world in, in Nigeria. Um, the second book was really when Sunny started to become a woman to come into not only her her magical powers but also to grow physically and emotionally as well and it was a really powerful story i love that book and i'm hoping that akata woman just closes out the trilogy in a fantastic way now moving on to February and more surprising sequels that I was not expecting. We have Sisters of the Forsaken Stars by Lena Rather. This is a sequel to Sisters of the Vast Black. I hope I've gotten the title right. Um, to be honest, Sisters of the Vast Black was not a novella that I thought I was going to love. Um, the whole nuns in space tagline thing is not actually a buzzword for me, but after a bunch of my friends raved about it, I picked it up and read it, and I also really loved it. I'm pretty sure that that was Lena Rather's debut, and it was so solid. I just really enjoyed it. And to know that there's a sequel, that it's going to tell us more about the characters and this kind of religious sisterhood in space and a brewing revolution and learning more about the world building, I am really excited. And then we have not a sequel, but a prequel called Bitter by Akweki Amezi. This is the story of the mother of the main character in Pet. Um, her name is Bitter. And I think this is going to be like not only a coming of age story, but also a, st a story of revolution and fighting to change the world. I think it's going to describe more of the events that led to basically the, the whole idea of like all the monsters being eradicated um, at the time of the story in Pet. How did that happen? and what was Bitter's role in it, like as a revolutionary, I guess. I am really looking forward to this because Pet was uh, definitely my favorite thing that I've read by Amezi so far, and I wasn't expecting to, to find out any more about the world, and this is gonna just gonna be such an interesting, well-written book, I'm sure. Now moving on to March, we have another uh, translated Chinese SFF anthology that I think looks really interesting. This is is The Way Spring Arrives and Other Stories, edited by Yu Chen and Regina Kanyu Wang. This one says it is written, edited, and translated by a female and non-binary team. And this is what really interests me in this is that um, I feel like over the past year or two there have been some more efforts to start bringing um, female Chinese um, authors into the English-speaking world to translate more of their things. I mean, formerly it was like I don't know, Lu Xixin and Bao Shu and who else, like who else could you name who wasn't a man basically from the Chinese SFF um, world. Um, so with things like Synopticon, um, had some more female voices being brought in. But the fact that this anthology is solely dedicated to female and non-binary authors is extremely interesting to me because I, I do think that from what I've read so far, there is a difference in sometimes the subject matter, the writing style, and the voice, just the the viewpoint of the stories. Um, and so yeah, I really want to read this and see, honestly, if it meets my expectations or not. So we will see. A little bit more the description of this says, um, time travel to a winter's day on the West Lake, explore the very boundaries of death itself, and meet old gods and new heroes in this stunning new collection. I hope it lives up to that promise. I need more fun, humorous works on my reading list, to be perfectly honest, and that is why John Scalzi's novel is on my most anticipated uh, releases list. His next book is The Kaiju Preservation Society, and this one is like very, very near future sci-fi, I guess. It does talk about COVID-19 and the pandemic, and it's apparently about a society that is trying to preserve kaiju. Um, I'm, I'm not into kaiju, but I 
I have to admit I'm kind of interested in seeing um, how Scalzi is going to talk about the pandemic in this, how he's going to make that part of this story, um, and also just, you know, is this kaiju preservation society utterly ludicrous or is, is there something more serious going on with it? I'm curious, so I will give it a shot. Then we have a collection, Memories Legion by James S. A. Corey. Um, this is a collection of all of the novellas and short fiction from the Expanse series. I've known for years that this is coming out, and so I've actually kind of avoided reading the novellas. I was like, oh, I'll just get to those when the big collection comes out after the book series is over with. So uh, it's kind of nice to have another big chunky book of material from the Expanse series to get into. Um, right now, I still haven't read the ninth and final book, but I have the audiobook. Um, so, so yes. Um, I don't know if I'm familiar with much of the material from these stories. I have a feeling that some of it may have been adapted into the television show, which I am up to date on. So we, we will see. But yeah, definitely looking forward to this and getting as much more of the expanse as I possibly can. Then there is a space opera novel by Maurice Broaddus coming out. It is called A Sweep of Stars. I think this is Broaddus's debut novel, though correct me if I'm wrong about that. I know I've read his short fiction in the past, and that's actually where I know his name from. I've read like his stories that were published in Uncanny Magazine, and that's why he's kind of been on my radar for a while. Um, when I first came across this book, though, I think it was like described in that sort of tagline way as like Black Panther meets The Expanse or something, and as those are two things that I really, really enjoy. I hope that the description is actually apt. <laughs> so often they're not though. Um, but anyway, I believe that this is the first in a space opera series, because aren't they all? Um, and it is about an African-inspired space empire. I'm not going to go into great detail about this one because I honestly actually don't want to know too much about it before I start reading it. I kind of want to go in cold and just experience it for what it is. That is actually it for this list of things I am most looking forward to over the next three months. Do let me know if there's anything that you are really looking forward to that I didn't mention today because of course so many other things are coming out. Definitely share them down below in the comments. I hope this was a helpful list to some of you. Thank you so much for watching as always and I'll be back to talk to you again soon and until then, bye.